Superman Hold Eye Variation. The Superman Hold or Arch Hold Eye Variation is an isometric back extension exercise that strengthens the posterior chain muscles as well as your upper back and shoulders. Lie down on a mat with your face facing the floor. Place your hands besides your legs, palms facing the ground. Then lift your feet and chest as high as you can while arching your back. Maintain this position for the desired amount of time before returning to the starting position. The entire posterior chain is active to keep the back and the legs up. The latissimus dorsi and posterior deltoid extend the shoulder. The trapezius and rhomboids retract the scapular. The erector spinae muscles extend the spine. The gluteus maximus extends the hip with the assistance of the hamstrings. The gastrocnemius and soleus plantar flex the ankle. This Superman hold with hands reaching forward variation is the hardest because of the lever your arms create on the posterior chain muscles. Here is a progression that will help you achieve the Superman hold with your hands reaching forward. Start with your hands pointing towards your legs, eye position, and slowly increase the difficulty by moving your hands into a W position. After you achieve the W position, increase the lever by extending your arms to the sides into a T position. Finally, bring your hands forward to increase the difficulty on your posterior chain muscles. Problem one is difficulty in raising our arms forward and adducting the shoulder blades due to shortening of the pectoralis muscles. Shortened pectoralis muscles restricts how much we can raise our arms and makes adducting the shoulder blades difficult. The result is hypermotility of the lower back. Solutions involve preparatory exercises and adaptations. We can perform the position with our arms to the sides. We can raise our arms without keeping them together. We can raise the arm and leg on the same side. Problem 2 is difficulty in extension or pressure on the lower vertebrae because of a large lever that overloads the erector spinae. Solution 1 is to press the ground with our hands. Pressing our hands on the ground improves the range of movement in the vertebral column and reduces the effort made by the erector spinae. The stronger we press our hands, the less the load will be on the erector spinae and the shoulder blade adductors. Another way to partially reduce the load on the erector spinae is to spread our arms to the sides. Solution 2 is to place a pillow under the abdomen. One arm is under the chin and the other arm is straight out on the floor. We can also raise our legs and straight arm without raising the head. Placing a pillow under the abdomen changes the axis of movement upwards towards the lower thoracic vertebrae. Raising a straight arm activates the erector spinae for stabilizing the vertebral column. Common problem 3 is pain or discomfort in the lower back caused by overload. This happens among exercisers with sensitive backs. The solution is to adapt our breathing so that it reduces loads on the lower back. When we combine back extension with inhalation, we help to attain a larger range of movement. Exhalation stimulates indirect contraction of the abdominal and pelvic floor muscles. Contracting the abdominals helps to support and stabilize the lower back. Exhalation with extension is especially suitable for exercisers who have sensitive conditions of back pains. Common problem 4 is excessive extension of the lumbar spine to compensate for movement limitation in the chest region. The solution involves preparatory exercises. We work on softening and moving the thoracic vertebrae and making exercises aware of the separation of movement between the lumbar, thoracic, and cervical areas of the spine. Concaving and rounding the spine while sitting on a chair. 
The aim of this exercise is to improve overall mobility in all vertebrae. Concaving and rounding the back while on all fours with an emphasis on thoracic mobility. The aim of this exercise is to improve segmental mobility in the thoracic vertebrae. Mobility of the thoracic vertebrae in the sagittal and horizontal planes. Aim of this exercise. Spinal mobility in the sagittal and horizontal planes with an emphasis on thoracic mobility. Focused thoracic extension with the assistance of hands. The aim of this exercise is to improve passive mobility in the thoracic vertebrae.